thumb for the first hundred days. He understands that the media has to chase rabbits, so he gives them rabbits to chase. Because if he doesn't give them rabbits to chase, they'll invent a rabbit. Newt Gingrich, December 26, 2016. Illustrated by Timothy Lim, written by Mark Pellegrini, with Brett R. Smith, editor and creative director. Additional editing by Colin Madden. Starring Mr. Thump and Marlon Bundo Pence. Act 1. Mr. Thump was born in the U.S. of A. and prospered thanks to the American way. As Thump's businesses flourished and his investments rose, he wanted to give back to his country and to those who supported him throughout the thick and the thin. Thump would fight for his country. He'd fight and he'd win. He declared through the wilderness, oppressed for eight long years, that he would be their next president through blood, sweat, and tears. He'd make America great, like it had been before, and he'd bring back the jobs that had been taken offshore. He'd keep America safe from those who meant to do harm by implementing common sense as a safety alarm. The establishment laughed, but his movement believed that Thumb's campaign promises could all be achieved. Some thought that Thump was a joke, but the joke was on them, when all the funny little frogs rallied around him. As the primaries began, Thump's enemies conspired, but the voters told them without stuttering, you're fired. The cheaters and the cowards and the dynasty brats were cast into the trash or sent scurrying like rats because Thump did one thing that they could not do correctly to speak to the citizens and address them directly. Thump went down the rabbit hole as the camera flashes lit, and he announced that his run for president was legit. The Huffington Post, June 16, 2015. Breaking news. Thump press conference live at Thump Tower. Thump announces presidential run. Nobody builds walls better than me. September 15, 2015. Long before the rabbit hole, a dog gave Thump a prediction. He'd win the White House and serve the Democrats in eviction. Thump found friends in strange places, and in all shapes and sizes, such as the frogs that croaked Keck. They were full of surprises. Keck. One of Thump's first adversaries was a man who loved guac. Thump toppled his dynasty and gave the experts a shock. The establishment rhinos blockaded Thump out of fear until Thump's buddy Doc arrived to help keep the path clear. Donald, the delegates. Barack Obama knows exactly what he's doing. Barack Obama knows exactly what he's doing. Teddy and Ruby Obot whined, but their cries went ignored when the train conductor shouted, to his friends, all aboard. Thump train number one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. With the votes counted, Thump had won in a field of 16. He'd been chosen to take on the Democrats' crooked queen. Thump was joined by his VP pick, Marlon Bundo Pence, and they rallied as the last race was soon to commence. Act 2 Now the time had come for the general election. 
where the citizens would make their ultimate selection. The mainstream media didn't like Thump at all, and joined with his foes to orchestrate his downfall. The media kings had decided well in advance who would be president and wouldn't leave it to chance. So Thump was pitted against a cruel adversary who believed she could triumph through the means monetary. Known as the Crooked One, villains financed her campaign, even though it was clear that she was sick in the brain. And then there were the rhinos, the old establishment guard, who were blocking Thump and his movement and blocking it hard. Thump and Pence were attacked on every side, every day, but stood their ground through it all and did things their own way. The forgotten voters saw through the crooked one's lies, so she called them deplorables with hate in her eyes. And then the mainstream media, which had been bought and paid, were being challenged by the voices of those unafraid. Through it all, Thump preserved as he rallied the nation, and his campaign concluded with a huge celebration. The crooked fiend was vanquished. The election was won. Thump's next stop was the White House. His work had just begun. When the mainstream media refused to cover Thump squarely, a little twittering bird helped him reach the masses fairly. Tweet. Happy Cinco de Mayo. The best taco bowls are made in Thump Tower Grill. I love Hispanics. If she couldn't break Thump's spirit, the crooked one believed. She'd cook his spirit instead, but her scheme wasn't achieved. Unlike the crooked one, Thump wasn't in it for the fame. Making America great was his solitary aim. The crooked one saw Thump's friends, wonderful and adorable. Secretly, she said they were a basket of deplorables. Les deplorables. The rhino said no rabbits beyond the velvet rope. Ditching the old establishment was Thump's only hope. Protesters, thugs, and bullies attacked Thump's friends when they met. Bikers formed a wall of fluff to keep them safe from the threat. Thump promised to the miners forced to abandon their hole that greatness could be achieved thanks to American coal. The media hated Thump and he was constantly wronged, but he knew exactly where their journalism belonged. Thump was caught talking of grabbing all things Pulse Anonymous. Protesters even made pink hats. Their ire was unanimous. When things looked dicey, Thump was ditched by Mr. McTurtle, who was left speechless as Thump made it over the hurdle. Disavowing Thump, Senate Majority Leader hides in his shell. Manatee reporting. Lowest labor participation since 1970s. 95 million Americans out of the labor force. Worst recovery since 1940s. Lowest home ownership rate in 51 years. Almost 13 million more Americans on food stamps. Over 43 million living in poverty. It was the goal of the media. Thump's movement it would crush, but he had good friends in Mr. Manatee and Mr. Thrush. While a few states went blue, many more of them turned red. The game was approaching the end. Thump fever had spread. Thump wins Pennsylvania. 
from his stronghold in Europe, the mastermind shook his fist. The crooked candidate he controlled had just been dismissed. Three o six a.m. wins the White House. Seven a.m. leaves Thump Tower. Seven thirty a.m. approves pipeline. Nine a.m. Thump rally. Eleven a.m. continues building the wall. One p.m. second Thump rally. Three p.m. pick up the VP. Act 3. Inauguration day came, and Thump held out his paw, swearing with pride he would uphold order and the law. Crowds gathered in the swamp known as Washington, D.C., and chanted together in true solidarity. The establishment, defeated, were not out of tricks, and vowed to obstruct him in the world of politics. They enjoyed their lives in the swamp and did not want it drained. It was of utmost importance their leisure was maintained. They fought Thump and they fought Pence, but each fight was a loss. All too late they realized who was really the boss. But Thump had his own bosses and promises to keep, and he had a whole lot to do before he could sleep. The establishment fat cats were promptly given the boot and replaced by a new team that was far more resolute. Together with Thump, they would bring America back to the heights it once soared at before things went off track. As for all of the snowflakes who didn't give Thump their vote, they were bawling and complaining until sore in the throat. But despite all of their crying, protesting, and screeching. No one cared anymore about their self-absorbed preaching because their country was emerging from a long, dark slump. America was great again, thanks to President Thump. Thump, thank you, Victory Tour. Thump quenched his thirst with hearty gulps of liberal tears from a reservoir that stayed full for his White House years. As the crooked one retreated, she left snowflakes behind, and each delicate one melted as their season declined. Good fences make good neighbors, which is a very old saying. Thump vowed to build a wall and that the neighbors would be paying. The donkeys couldn't do much, but they knew how to whine. A shame no one would listen to a pouty equine. Thump teamed up with his friend Mad Dog, a ferocious marine, to protect America from threats both known and unseen. Then came Thump's buddy T-Rex, a fan of fossil fuels. He'd show the world why American energy rules. With one turn of the crank, Thump set the D.C. swamp to drain, exposing the bottom feeders who had much to explain. With a paw on the Lincoln Bible, and a paw in the air, Thump pledged to make America great again, his most solemn prayer. The End The use of imagery is well done, with references to pop culture and a play on words almost as if this is a children's book for adults and trolls. This is definitely a work that hits the mark in its depiction in how counterculture played a role in Trump's presidential election. The anthropomorphic characters in the book are nicely drawn. The details, colors, 
and atmosphere in the art from page to page is effectively done in that it shows how Trump transitioned through each stage toward the presidency. The use of acts is also a nice touch, giving Trump's march to the White House the sense that it is a play, portraying a modern-day hero's journey of sorts, with a leading protagonist, supporting characters, various obstacles, and his nemesis. The rhyming is clever and works well. Why make Trump and Pence a rabbit? Well, rabbits are considered good luck by some, prosperity by others, and still others as a symbol of bravery as when they defend their territory against others. Rabbits can also symbolize springtime and a change of season. Also, rabbits can symbolize the archetypal trickster in mythology. In Judaism, the rabbit is considered a filthy animal because he chews the cud but does not divide the hoof. To Mesopotamians and Syrians, the hares symbolize death and rebirth. Some early Christians used the symbol of the rabbit on gravestones, suggesting resurrection. Of course, hare does rhyme with hair, and he did seem constantly on the run, so. And there is the old saying, madder than a March hare, perhaps Hillary was merely Alice chasing the white rabbit. Who is the audience of this book? I think that the audience is Trump supporters and the trolls that celebrated in Trump's election. The last page is a jab at the Arabic world, and possibly even China, with a message that presents three characters, as if outright identifying a foreign culture, and reads below, You're going the wrong way. This is America. We read like normal people do, from left to right. Believe me.